Hey, my beautiful listeners, we are back with Season 3 of The Beautiful Side of Grief, and I'm your host, Helen Morris. My incredible guests continue to share their own personal stories of grief in so many different forms, and how they have managed to find the positives and beauty from their experiences. And I hope by listening to these honest, heartfelt accounts, you can find the tips, insights, resources, and strategies you need for where you are right here and now. And maybe one day even find your own beautiful side to your grief. So share away as I would love this podcast to reach as many who need to hear it as possible. And don't forget to check out the episode notes as well for more information and links. Plus, the energy healing I do that changed my life forever. And this season, I'd love to share the affirmations and meditations I'm working on also, so stay tuned for those. Right now though, my thanks to you for listening in, and let's check out who this week's guest is. Have you ever seen that movie Miracle Man or heard Joe Dispenza's story of how he healed himself? Well, they are testaments that miracle healing can and does happen. My guest today, Anne Hintz, has that kind of story, the trauma, grief and tears of finding her mum dead when she was just 19, stayed locked inside of her for 20 years until she discovered a simple technique that not only changed her life, but also the bone structure in her skull. Plus, she has grown half an inch at the age of 55. Pretty impressive, huh? So I'm going to be having a chat with Anne about this technique she discovered that released years of grief and trauma from her body and how she adapted it to have even greater control and effect on her emotionally, physically, and spiritually. I love this concept because it's very similar to what completely changed my life after Tao died, going from a lifelong perfectionist to feeling calm, in control, peaceful, and best of all, happy. So that's the basis of the intention I'm setting for today, for you to understand that by finding a technique that works for you, you are able to transform the grief to find peace and calm within, that you can do it, that it's not dependent on anyone else. That's pretty cool. I'm also sending you loads of love and hugs your way. So let's meet Anne and hear her story. Welcome, Anne. Great to have you with me today. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. So in the intro, I mentioned that you had locked the trauma of what you experienced with your mum inside of you for 20 years. Why was that? Did you not have any support system around you or counseling available? Or was it that it was such a deeply emotional event for you that you just locked it inwards, as many of us do? I didn't know what else to do. There was no there was no support system. You know, I think the mother often holds the family together. So once she has gone, the family pretty much disintegrated. And we never talked about emotions. We never talked about anything that happened. We just we just didn't do it. So it was like the water that I swam in. I didn't know there was anything else. I just carried on with life. Yeah, so many of us do. How did locking down that grief all those years affect you physically, emotionally, mentally? Run us through that. I had a lot of digestive issues over the years. I had no idea that it was related at all. (laughs) So I spent the next, you know, 10 years, 15, 20 years working on that. I was very reactionary. I had a lot of triggers (laughs) and I was very negative. My mind was very negative. I didn't really, I wasn't really aware of that at the time. You know, it's only looking back now that I can see that that was the case, but I didn't I didn't really know that any of it was affecting me. I did one point I was using food. I would use food, you know, again in hindsight I can see to hold down those emotions. I didn't want to feel them, so I would I would eat. I used to love Brazil nuts out of the freezer. I would just eat Brazil nuts out of the freezer yeah. just to keep those emotions inside because it was too scary to look at them. 
I totally understand that. That was very similar to myself, you know, like that's how I used to, I had loads of digestive problems and I had chronic illnesses by the time I was 20 and, you know, and I didn't know what was causing them. I thought it was something externally or, you know, something wrong with my body. I didn't realize it was everything that had locked inside of me and that was causing all these issues and yeah so many triggers so that makes perfect sense to me and I guess to a lot of people that who are listening as well so were you like you said that you weren't really aware that this grief or trauma was the causing all these issues so what sorts of things had you tried to deal with the stresses you were under over those years well, I kind of went to more the physical. So it's like, what am I eating? Am, am I eating something that's making me feel this way? So I did a lot of dietary things. I did a lot of cleanses. I did fasts. I was a vegetarian. I was a vegan. I was a macrobiotic person. I did live foods a couple of different times. And I got to the point where I felt like I could, actually, I could probably heal anything with dietary change. However, <laughs> things would kind of work they would, they would shift for a little while, a few weeks maybe, and then things would revert back to the way they had been. So, yeah, there were a lot of trial and effort, trial. Yeah. Trials yeah, that's the other thing too, that journey of, especially that holistic journey, again, same thing, went through loads and loads of natural modalities, thought, yes, this is going to be the one, this is going to release it, this is going to give me what I'm looking for. And it helps at the time and then, you revert back to how you were because we haven't changed the emotions or the the stuff wrapped around it. So we, over time, just go back to that original template that we have within us. So, yeah. Absolutely. Let's talk about the conversation that you had with one particular health professional that essentially changed your life. Right. So I'll, I'll back up a little bit. So something, yeah, sure. I, don't, I don't know the time frame exactly. It was the same kind of time frame, but I had like a business altercation with a couple of other mothers at the school my boys were at. And they thought I had done th- something I shouldn't. I didn't think I'd done anything wrong, but my mind just went out of control. It just went over and over and over what had happened. I couldn't let it go for days. And I realized, I don't think this is normal. I think other people wouldn't react this way to what had happened. And so it kind of felt a little bit like how my dad would react when he thought I'd done something wrong and I didn't and my mind would spin like that. And that was kind of the first inkling. Maybe there's something from my childhood that, you know, Uh. I need to look at, which is so funny to actually say now because there was so much from my childhood that I hadn't looked at. But that was my first inkling. And then it was kind of a long, I don't know how much longer later it was, but I I went to a holistic physician. I don't remember why, probably just to check up. But he recognized I was more stressed than I should be because I was was a stay-at-home mother with two younger boys. It shouldn't have been too bad. I know it couldn't be stressful, but he kind of knew me and he knew I was more stressed than I should be. And he asked me on a scale of zero to 10 what my stress level was. And I said eight out of 10. And then he asked me why. And that was the question, because I knew at that point it was my mother's death 20 years earlier because the tears were still just under the surface. Yeah. Yeah. So I hadn't dealt with them. So he knew this technique. It's called EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. It's also called tapping. So he tapped with me for about 15 minutes and I walked away being able to tell that story in my mind without the tears there anymore. And for me, that was just a huge shift to realize that we keep those memories and those emotions stuck inside of our body and we can let them go. And that's all it takes, isn't it? It's, it's, it's not only hearing the right thing at the right time, but actually feeling, feeling the effects of this within your body. And it's almost like a ding, ding moment when you go, ah, something's making sense here. And that's such an incredible feeling. So I've I've had some other guests on who speak about the power of this wonderful technique, and it's so easy, and it's it it's so straightforward, yet it is so incredibly powerful. But you actually went into so much depth with it, with recognizing the emotions that were locked in your body and releasing that energy. 
Many of us would have just been happy with some good wins and leave it at that, but you didn't. Why? <laughs> I was determined to change. I, I mean, I felt like I'd been working off trying to find something that worked for such a long time. And to actually find something was just so amazing to me. And, you know, it wasn't just that one thing with the doctor. I have an engineering background. I was a software engineer. I like things <sighs> to, to work. I like to know that they're working. So I tested it out. I had a 17-year-old cat at home. He needed to have a daily saline shot because his kidneys were failing. So the first time I gave him an injection, my hand was shaking so much. I was so afraid of giving him this shot and of hurting him that I wasn't going to be able to do it every day. And that, that's what I'd been told I needed to do. So I checked out. I tested it with EFT. I tapped about my fear of hurting my cat. I tapped about my hand shaking. I tapped about my memories around injections and the next day, the needle just slid right in. All that wow. fear that I had been holding in my body had just disappeared. And that's when I realized freedom is on the other side. And that's where I want to be. I, I want to get to that place of freedom. And if it can work with something as simple as that, right, that's also when I realized how deceptively powerful it is because it doesn't look like it's doing much. We're just tapping on certain parts of our body as we're talking something through. So it doesn't look like it's doing much. It doesn't necessarily feel like it's doing much, but but I could see the power of it and I really wanted to change. So I did. I started using it every day, started noticing when I was emotional during the day. And even that's a tricky thing to, to find at the beginning because we kind of get caught up in our emotions. Yeah. But to actually say to yourself, okay, I'm feeling sad now. I'm feeling frustrated now. And then tap on it. That's That in itself is quite a step. But at the time I started to feel, I could feel my mind quieting, which is what I wanted. And then I just wanted more. So that's when I wrote down every emotional memory I could think of from my childhood. And I tapped through one each night for about an hour to an hour and a half every night until I'd gone through them all. And how long my did mind that take. <laughs> it, it, it took a few months, to be honest. I mean, it did because yeah. I had three or four sheets of paper. But I could feel my mind becoming quieter as it, as time went on. And I, I remember opening up my kitchen door and just saying to myself, feels like I'm living in a different reality because my mind, which used to always be talking or saying something or criticizing me or judging someone else, that those voices were no longer in my head. And I realized that those had been programmed into me in childhood. They were mostly my dad's words that I would just say over and over again. But I couldn't see that until they were gone. And I could yeah. look back and say, okay, gosh, yes, those were my dad's words and they were in my head. And that's, that's what happens for a lot of us. You know, 90% of the thoughts and process, what we think about that goes on in our head is so automatic. We don't even focus in on what we're actually thinking about. It just happens. And so we just keep repeating the same cycle over and over again until we consciously decide, actually, we're going to change that. We're going to change that thought. We're going to get rid of that thought. We're going to. So it does take a lot of conscious effort just to reprogram how we think and even not to think. That's a big thing too, eh? <laughs> to not think. <laughs> yeah, Just well, what I mind. realized, what I realized in the process is actually acknowledging the thought, right? Catching that thought and then tapping on it, right? Allowing it to be felt, to be expressed, to be okay, not suppressing it. We're so used to suppressing those thoughts or trying not to think it. But yes. it's actually in the full acceptance of what you're actually feeling at the time that's when the shift happens. And that's a difference from just reliving the same thought over and over again, because what you're doing is, is, is reinforcing whatever that thought is to actually acknowledging it, because once you actually acknowledge it, then you're able to release it and let it go, aren't you? Absolutely, yes. Yes, and it's, it's very subtle and it's hard to grasp that concept itself. Because we're so used to not thinking it or, or suppressing it. It's like it is 
something that's easier to grasp as you go on with this work. But to begin with, it's like, well, I shouldn't be hating. I shouldn't be hating that person, right? We'll say that. We'll say that to someone. You can't, you shouldn't be hating. But if you're actually feeling hate, then once you acknowledge it and accept it, and we're tapping, we kind of just tap it out, then it's gone from the body, right? Then the hate is gone. I'd much rather have it out of my body than inside my body. Right. And being uh-huh. suppressed inside. So that's what the deeper I went, the more I was able to re- understand. It's just that acceptance. The soon as you accept it fully, it shifts. What I love about this process is that you can do it yourself. You don't need to be going and seeing somebody or talking it through with somebody that you can do it yourself. So are you able just to take us through the steps or the process you use for EFT or tapping and perhaps give us a couple of examples for our listeners to be able to release, say, pain in their grief? You know, a lot of people feel that really deep, heartbroken you know that deep ache in their heart and one maybe say for releasing an emotion a grief emotion are you able to take us through a couple of examples sure and and they will all be connected at some level but yes so with EFT now I know you're listening to this so I'm going to describe it as best I can sure. we start out with an opening phrase so the phrase might be even though I can feel this heartache I, or I can feel this pain in my heart, right? If you want to use the words that fit exactly what you're feeling. So you would change these words to, to be something that you resonate with. So we'll, we'll say, I, I, even though I feel this pain in my heart, that's my truth in this moment. And it's okay that I feel this way. Now, when you say that phrase, you're actually tapping on what we call the karate chop point, which is where on the side of the hand you would do a karate chop. So between the the, the pinky finger and your wrist on the side of your hand. And you're tapping fairly firmly, not not so gently that you can't really feel it and not so hard you're going to hurt yourself. And you're tapping about five to seven times as you're saying this phrase. So even though I feel this pain in my heart, that's my truth in this moment and it's okay that I feel that way. Even though I feel this pain in my heart, that's my truth in this moment and it's okay that I feel that way. So that's the opening phrase. And then we move on to the the points. The first point is the crown point on the top of the head. Again, you're tapping as you're saying this pain in my heart. Then the next point is the beginning of the eyebrows, the bone at the beginning of the eyebrows, this pain in my heart. The next point is the bone on the edge of the eyes, this pain in my heart. The next point is the bone under the eye, the cheekbone, this pain in my heart. The next bone is the upper lip underneath the nose, this pain in my heart. Next point is the chin point, this pain in my heart. Next point is the collarbone point, this pain in my heart. And then the last point is about three or four inches under the armpit where the bra strap goes across, if you have one, this pain in my heart. And then you take a deep breath and you let it out. And that's one round of EFT. Wow, that's fast too. Yeah, right. It doesn't take long. So you would just go through it again and again through those points. Take a deep breath each time. Now, one of the great things about EFT is that your body shows you when you're releasing energy. So again, with that engineering background of mine, I really like to know that's actually working. So there's different ways that your body will show you. So you might have tears. Tears are always a release of resistance. You might sigh. You might burp. You might yawn. A lot of people yawn and the voice will change, right? You might start out with that emotion in your voice, but as you release that energy, the voice will become calmer and it will sound more like you're reading from a book. And that's how you know that you've actually released the energy from the body. So, you know, with something like the pain in your heart, it would dissipate over time and you would keep tapping until you could just say, oh, there's a pain in my heart, and it doesn't sound like there's a pain in your heart, right? Yeah. So that would be that. And then what was the second example? So if you, like, were feeling a really strong emotion, like you were angry, you were angry, say, at the person who had passed because for whatever reason, maybe they didn't take care of themselves as well as they could have, or maybe they took something they shouldn't have. But you know, you 
it doesn't matter what causes the anger. The fact is, is that, you know, a lot of people are angry in their grief. And, and that's I okay. That's a yeah. good one to, yeah. to give an example of. So again, you would start out with the karate chop point and you would say an opening phrase then. So I will say it from my brother because he died from alcohol poisoning, even though I'm so angry at Paul for not looking after himself. That's my truth in this moment. And it's okay that I feel that way, even though I'm so angry at Paul. That's my truth in this moment. And it's okay that I feel that way, even though I'm so angry at Paul for not looking after himself and basically killing himself. That's my truth in this moment. And it's okay that I feel that way. And then I would work down the points. I'm so angry at Paul, like the top of my head. Then the eyebrow point, I'm so angry at Paul. Then side of my eye, I'm so angry at Paul. Then under my eye, I'm so angry at Paul. Then on my upper lip, I'm so angry at Paul. My chin, I'm so angry at Paul. My collarbone, I'm so angry at Paul. Under my arm, I'm so angry at Paul. Then I take a deep breath, let it out. Now, as you go through this process, a, a, another thought might arise, another feeling might arise, right? There might be a, a specific, it's like, why exactly am I angry with him? What did he do that I'm angry at, right? And then I would tap using those words because I'm honing in on that anger because that anger is actually stored physically in our body, in our connective yes. tissue from my experience. And so we're honing in on really where that is stored. So that's what we kind of work with that as we go through with the tapping. Oh, that's so good. And so fast and it's so easy to do. How important is the wording? And does it matter where we start? Does it, we can start wherever, whatever we're feeling. Is that, is that how it goes? That The uppermost feeling, right? The, the most intense feeling that you're feeling right now because it is very much a layer-by-layer layer process. So yeah. the first emotion, you work with that, and then it opens up the subconscious mind. So the next, the next emotion will surface or the next memory will surface. So if you're working with something like an, an event that happens, so for me with my mother, you know, I woke up in the morning and it was quiet, right? And that was unusual. She usually had the, the uh, radio on. So I knew something was possibly up at that point. Then I, you know, I, the time frame, then I went to the bathroom, really needed to go to the bathroom and I found her in the bathroom. So there was a time frame. So it was like a story. So I tapped through the story, starting at the beginning, finding each emotion as it happened. Then I would tap through it. Then I'd continue on with the story. And then I'd get to the end of the story. And then I'd come back to the beginning again. And I would go through it again. And maybe more details of the story would emerge because the emotions will have released and the subconscious mind opens up because all the memories are in there. And maybe some extra detail would come and I can tap on that. And then I go through the story and then I come back to the beginning and I keep going through the story again and again until there's no emotion left, until it's cleared out. Wow. The words we're using are to bring the emotion back into the body because that's what we're working on, right? So so if we're tears, I mean, this is not easy to say to anyone, or not easy to do either. But if the tears are flowing, the words we use are the words to keep the tears flowing. Yes. Because I sense. believe that all the tears that we have not shed are still inside of us, ready to come out. And we're holding, we're using energy to hold them in. So the freedom comes in letting them out. So that's what the words, we're using the words to bring the emotion back into the body. But if you're currently feeling emotion, and if you're, if you're stuck in the grief right now and you can't put words to it, then just tap on those points because it's the tapping that releases the stuck energy from the nervous system. Yes. Yeah. And your mind is already aware of the intention that you just want to get rid of this feeling, this emotion, and so that's enough in that moment. I think that's a really really important distinction to make and not get too hung up on having to have the exact wording and the order right let's just start tapping and then perfect the process as you go you run through a very very good example of how you do the tapping so people can tune into you on youtube yeah. and this you can also do it on other people 
because I used to do it on my son when he had nightmares at night. I would go to his room and I would just tap on him on the different points. I didn't have to use any words because he was already in the midst of right this this nightmare he'd had. So I would just tap on his points gently a, a few rounds, and then he'd just say to me, it's okay, mom, I can go back to sleep now. Great. Yeah. I wish I had known that when my daughter had night terrors. <laughs> I had a few years wrapped up with that. Okay. Um, Eckhart Tolle shares, he talks about the pain body where whenever there is negativity in your life that you never, that you've never fully dealt with, that energy of that negativity needs to go somewhere and where it goes is inside of us. It has to take some form. And for some people, it makes them sick or ill. And for others, it can cause them to reenact drama in intimate relationships and so on. So they're reenacting that intense emotional negativity. And when that pain body awakens within you, which is quite often the case when we experience like a severe trauma event or something like that, like somebody dying, the pain body actually wants to perpetuate that negative reaction and because that's what it feeds on. So that's what we're really trying to address here, isn't it? That that pain body within us. Yeah, I think of it in a slightly different way than he talks about it. Um, I, I, yeah, I think in terms us. of the law, I think in terms of the law of attraction, right? So I've, I've kind of feel yeah. like I know the law of attraction is working all the time. I'm not talking about in terms of manifestation. I'm not talking about it in that sense. I'm talking about every mm-hmm. day. It's working every second of every day. We're emitting a signal and we're attracting back into our future based on that signal. So we're programmed in childhood and we store this negative emotion inside of us physically in childhood and it's part of our signal. So we attract back into our future similar feelings, similar events because it's stored inside of us. So that kind of fits in with what he's talking about then. So I feel then to release, to do this work, we're releasing this tension that's stored inside of us and it's changing our signal and when we change our signal we change our future and it and it affects you at a cellular level which we're going to get into because that's what it's done for you because really it's truly amazing when you're releasing this energy this negative frequency within your body it literally does change how you look how you feel how you act everything about you so What I want to talk about just before we go there is that, you know, when you have profound grief and it is so draining, like you are so exhausted, you feel like you can't sometimes even get yourself out of bed, let alone doing this practice. How important is it that people do this consistently? Can you do it once a week or just when you have to do it? Because I'm aware that people aren't always in that headspace where they can do things consistently. Yeah, well, I think it depends on how fast you want to get through it, right? How determined you are. Yeah, I mean, I was really, really determined, so... Every day, I wanted to do it every day because I want. I knew freedom was on the other side, and I wanted to find that freedom. Great, yeah. Thanks, thanks for that. Let's talk about how you took it to the next level to discover that you had the power within you to create physical changes in your body through this awareness and focus. Have I got that right? That's how you did it. You actually, I did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now I and believe I mean, that change- even. Even Sorry. using EFT, I believe we're changing at the physical level. We just aren't aware of it. Yeah. Because yeah. tell us how you got to change your neck and your jaw and your skull <laughs> and grow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I kept going with the EFT and I, I did a lot of it over time. And I, I realized, as I said, that it's opening up the subconscious mind. It's actually expanding our awareness as well. Now, I didn't know when I started, I didn't know what that word really meant, but we can expand our awareness. So when I started, I wasn't aware of how I felt. 
I didn't know my emotions during the day because I'd suppressed everything. Yeah, I didn't really know. But as I went through more and more EFT, I became aware of my emotions at any moment during the day. And then I became aware of the physical sensations underneath the emotions. So we know, I mean, empaths tend to know this more than others. So underneath any emotion like sadness or frustration or anger, there's a set of physical sensations. Might be, for me, I was lived in fear a lot. So and I could fear that, I could feel that fear in my stomach area. It was tension. I wasn't aware of that when I first started this journey. But then I became aware of the tension that I was holding inside when I was feeling fear. So at that point, I didn't feel like I needed to use EFT as much. I could have done. I could have tapped about, even though I feel this fear in my stomach, I could have used those words as I was tapping. But I wanted to focus more on the sensations themselves because I now knew where they were. So what I did and was I actually found I had to hold myself like a statue because the feelings, they wanted to disappear. They were kind of squirrely. The soon as I would focus on them and I would move or I would take a breath, I couldn't find them anymore. And then I'd have to think the thought again. So what I realized I had to do was find the tension inside and then stop like a statue, not take any breath, just stop where I was in my breath and just feel that fear sitting in my stomach. And I would talk to it because I wanted it. I just wanted to feel it. I knew I was trying to feel my feelings. So how do I do that? How do I feel that fear in my yeah. stomach? Yeah. So it was, it was a process to learn how to do it. And I would just feel it. And so I would talk to it. I can feel you sitting there in my stomach. I can feel that tension right there in my stomach. It's okay. I just want to feel you. I want to allow you to be. And then at some point I would have to take a deep breath and I would notice there would be a shift. The fear in my stomach would have shifted. So then I would think the thought again that had this fear and do the same thing again. And I would do it again and again with the same thought until there was no longer any fear attached to it. And then that thought is now free. There's no fear there anymore. Okay, one quick question to interrupt. Very early on in our conversation, you mentioned that you had digestive issues in that. Did doing this technique resolve those issues for you? Did they not did fully, they... but mostly, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's the little bit more tension that I can feel in there that I've got to let go of. But yeah, we have no idea how much tension we hold inside of us. And it's a, an unraveling process. You're only shown the next step along the way. So it, it, to me, it's unbelievable the amount of tension that I'm still finding in my solar plexus and in my ribs that I didn't know was there before. So let me continue a little bit more with my story. Yes. So I kept going with this feeling of the feelings. And at night, instead of doing the EFT tapping, I would lay on the sofa and I would feel these collective traumas. I worked with more collective traumas, like for the US, like 9-11, earthquakes I've been, and I know you've had some over there too. And just feel all those emotions and those sensations inside and let them go over and over and over again until at some point I could keep my awareness inside my body, which I'd never heard of before. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was kind of just playing. And so I just kept trying to do it. And so the only way I can really explain this to someone, because it's I know it's really hard to understand, is imagine you have a toothache or a stomach ache. You can pinpoint in your mind, you can pinpoint where that pain is coming from. But once the pain has released, you can't really get your awareness back to the same point. You can't feel where it was coming from. And I found I could do that. I could put my awareness inside, move it around, find tension. And I would do the same thing with the tension that I was doing with the physical sensations. I would hold my awareness on it, fully accept it, and it would release and so I would do this over and over and over again. And at some point, it took many months, I was actually able to put my awareness inside my head. And once I got my awareness inside my head, I was blown away by the forces pulling my skull out of alignment and the pain in my left cheek that I had lived with for 50 years and did not know that this was inside of me. Just incredible. So I just worked on it a little at a time, right? just a little bit at a time, just feeling the tension, 
allowing it to be, letting it release. So over time, I would actually feel my skull bones kind of relax into a more, what I now know is a more aligned position, just from releasing this dis-ease on the inside, right? And all this disease I didn't know was in there. And we are not aware. We, we're just not aware until we are aware, right? Yes. We have to get to the point that we're ready to do this work. So that's the whole past has been, am I ready to find this next level? And when I am, can I accept it? And when I accept it, it let's go. And then I'm shown the next level. Can I accept it? Can I allow it to be? And when I can, it lets go and I get the next level. So it's for those people who are willing to go on that journey, then the spiritual growth is there. But not everyone's willing. Yes. And you think of all those years that you've just been locking all that stress and energy in over and over and over and over. So I can completely understand why it's a layering technique. And it's quite incredible to understand that we have this immense power within us to to unlock that and to shift that, to move it. Yeah. So you also have the belief that the more trauma we experience, the greater our spiritual growth. Why do you believe that? Because there are going to be people listening who believe just as strongly that they didn't ask for nor want spiritual growth. They just want to be able to have their fill in the gap, son, daughter, mother, father, brother, sister, back with them. Absolutely. And it's not, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a choice. I think we have the capacity, the more trauma we have, the greater our capacity for spiritual growth. It doesn't mean we're actually going to actualize that. But doing this work of feeling these emotions, which have kind of pulled us off kilter, right? So we have the capacity to go the other direction and it's this work, it's this inner work that creates, the, to me, in my understanding, it creates that spiritual growth because we have to open ourselves up to these wounds and we have to clean them out and let them go. So to me, that's what this inner work has done. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this is what I love. It's up to where everybody's at in their life, what they're willing to open themselves up to, because truly this life is quite magical when we do allow ourselves to be open to different ideas, perceptions, different ways of thinking. There is a Tibetan prayer, grant that I may be given the appropriate difficulties and sufferings on this journey so that my heart may truly be awakened and that my practice of liberation and universal compassion may be truly fulfilled. So that goes back a long, long way. But it's interesting because you were talking about collective trauma, like 9-11. And I find it interesting that we are storing trauma related to that, even though we weren't necessarily involved with it on a personal level. So there's a lot of people that probably have that trauma residing within them. So how did you know to go to that collective level? Gosh, that's an interesting question. I'm not even sure I know the answer. But I, I mean, I know I was looking for things that triggered me, right? That, that created some emotion inside of me because I was, I was looking for more growth. I, I had done my childhood stuff. I wasn't as reactionary. So, okay, what can I work on next with this, this feeling, the feelings? And so we all have our own experience of those big events that have happened, right? The tsunami, the Fukushima, all those things, we all experience them. So, you know, sometimes we think that, that that's happening outside of us and that there's nothing we can do about that. But our own experience is how we felt about it. And if we feel those in our body, I think that the feelings that we experience are feelings that we've all had before. And it's part of that replaying of what the pain body would, Eckhart Tolle would talk about. And once we feel those feelings, once we allow them to be expressed, they're not inside of our body anymore and we don't feel them as much anymore. So we become imperturbable. And to me, that is, that is kind of almost the ultimate goal, 
not to suppress those feelings, right? Someone could, you could say someone is imperturbable if they're really suppressing a lot of things, but to actually have experienced them and let them pass through and then be imperturbable, to me, that that would be the goal. I was listening to a fellow podcaster and he's of German descent and he was talking about having this reaction to the war in in the Ukraine and Russia and having this very powerful emotions wrapped around that. And the person he was talking to said, well, the chances are you've got inherited trauma coming through from your ancestors, maybe from World War II or even prior to that. And he was able to track it back to previous ancestral trauma. And that's the other thing I think that we are having more awareness of today, that there is a lot of ancestral trauma that can come through in our DNA. And given certain circumstances, we can actually turn that on if it's there and yeah. and we can feel those feelings from it so that's the other side to it as well but but there's more to it than that oh okay (laughs) people think about it we all learned about world war one and world war two in school and did we feel those feelings and let them go at that point or did we hold them in because we weren't allowed to let them go or we weren't shown a way to let them go and we've all seen documentaries and movies about world war one and world war two and other wars And that lives inside of us. If we ever had any emotions as we were watching them and we didn't know what to do with them and we suppressed them like we usually do, they are then part of our signal and are possibly creating what's happening now. Now, that's just to trigger something else that I just thought of because when I was doing a program for four-year-olds, we were doing a, a comprehensive screening program And one of the things we used to say to parents is be aware of your children sleeping close to where they could hear the television because there was a lot of the noise and the violence and the guns and things like that that children would hear but not necessarily know how to process. And just by hearing it could actually cause unrest and and affect their sleep patterns. So they were saying, make sure your children are sleeping far away from the television or noises like that. So that's interesting as well. We, yeah. We're getting it from every which way when we start to unravel it, aren't we? Yeah, and we're programmed in those first years of life. And, you know, we've all experienced probably these kind of movies and things in those first seven years of life. So it's programmed inside of us, in our subconscious mind. We're not aware that it's replaying. Right? That, that re- to me, that replaying happens from those first, mostly those first seven years of life. And we're just not aware of it. Now, yeah. for me, at this point, I am working inside my bones. I am working to release tension in my cheekbones and my jaw bones and my tooth roots. So I feel like I'm actually releasing some of that and possibly the ancestral, but definitely the subconscious early years programming. You know, we talk about, let's find the root of the problem. (laughs) Well, now I realize that I think that the tension is stored in our tooth roots. I don't know that for sure. I just keeps coming to my mind as I'm releasing this tension. There's a lot of research that links issues with your teeth and breast cancer. And they say when you actually resolve the issue with a tooth or your teeth, it can affect breast cancer. So there's a lot of research out around that as well. So what do you see as our future with this type of awareness? I think we can change the future of the planet. Absolutely. Because I think we are replaying things. And if we actually let go of this programming, we are changing our future. Right? If we let go of all our divisions, I don't know if you have as many divisions in New Zealand as we have in the US, and there's a lot of division here. If we let go of all our emotions around those divisions, if we let go of our fear of climate change, 
right? I remember learning about climate change in school and feeling afraid, feeling petrified of what was going to happen, storing that emotion inside of me, right? Which is then replaying, right? It's attracting the same feelings. So if we let go of all that, then we're changing our signal and we're changing our future. Gosh, this is such a fascinating conversation, Anne, and I know that we can deep dive and go down some rabbit holes that would take us who knows where, but I'm also mindful that we're sort of heading up to our time. So I'm going to wrap it up today, and I always have a set of questions that I ask my guests. What is the best thing that's happened to you so far today? So far today? Oh, goodness, so far today. (laughs) Or this past week, just something that, that's that been really good that's happened for you. Oh, gosh. Well, I think I mentioned to you just before we got on that I just found my the information about my birth father just this last couple of months. And I received a package of information from a friend of his with photos of my dad that I had never seen before. So that was really fun. Yes, that's so, so special. And you share with our listeners. The connection to New Zealand. I'm very proud of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was actually con- conceived in New Zealand, but born in England. But my birth mother lives in Nelson. And I have a new half sister that I just found out about who lives in Wanganui. So yeah. that's so cool. So we can Kiwify you, no problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> what is your proudest moment to date in your life? My proudest moment, probably having my children. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No explanation required. Yes. What's your go-to when you're having moments in your day that your day is turning to custard and you need to pull yourself out of it? What do you do? I go inside and I feel how I'm feeling. And yes, allow it to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's part We've of just me now. The hour I was talking it. about that. Yeah. <laughs> I do it hundreds of times a day, probably. Yeah. And it's just a part of me now. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. And what t- takeaways would you like to leave our listeners with? I would like them to know that, you know, if you are going through grief, I know without a doubt that we only inhabit our bodies. We are not our bodies because I can see from one place inside my body to another place inside my body. So I cannot be my body. So I believe that anyone who has passed on, has died, is is still around in another form. I think you know that too. Yes. But I know it. I know, I know it without yeah. a doubt. Yes. <laughs> I know. Other people are not quite there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, hopefully for hearing it from other people will, you know, help help realize that that's the case. Yeah. yeah. I want other people to know that it's definitely possible to attain peace and that peace is on the other side of all these emotions. And I wanted to know that it can be as simple as taking a deep breath. Yes. We don't realize that, but but Just taking a deep breath in the moment relaxes us. When we're relaxed, we're emitting a different signal, and that in itself is going to change the future. Yes. You know, the power of our breath, I can't emphasize this enough, the effect on the vagus nerve, which then just has the ability to calm the whole entire body down with one just like a deep, slow breath. Your whole reality can change within that breath. It's so beautiful. I love that. We're going to have your links in the episode notes and including your YouTube videos because there's loads more info and how to that you go through in your YouTube videos and they're fascinating to watch. So I encourage anybody who's enjoyed listening to Anne and I today to go and check out her YouTube videos and just dig and delve a little bit more into that. I really want to thank you, Anne, for just sharing such wonderful accomplishments that you've had, not only with EFT and where that's taken you, but also that advanced knowledge and awareness that you've received just by taking those those steps into your own self-healing 
and letting people know that it's possible to come from years and years of tra- trauma back to a place where you're you're feeling pretty good. So I'm excited about that. So thank you so very, very much for being with me today. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you got some real value from this episode. Let me know how I'm doing or if there's a topic you'd like covered by clicking on the Healing To Be You Gmail link or going to the Healing To Be You website. To get notified of new episodes, hit the subscribe button and please share, share, share if you know of someone who could benefit from this episode. Until next time, be kind to you and take good care.